In today's Project Spotlight, I'm going to be talking to a piece that I've named Never Again. I'll show you what I made, how I made it, and what I learned from the experience. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So this piece is a piece that I made way back in 2010. So it's been around for quite a while. And this is a piece that I made when I was living in Korea and I was studying traditional Korean sewing techniques. And so in this class, I learned a lot of different techniques and I did a lot of different projects. And most of the projects my teacher was using to introduce something new. And so this piece, it was made to introduce the reversible patchwork seam. So this is a seam, it is finished on both sides so that your piece doesn't clearly have a right and a wrong side. So the Korean word is samsal. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but that's the name of this, which is one of a couple of different reversible patchwork seam techniques that they have. So if you want to see how to do this seam stitch by hand, you can check out my tutorial that I have for that. But this was the first project that I did with this. And when my teacher was introducing this, um, she had the uh, fabric, which is Raimi fabric, which is really nice to work with. And she had just a couple of um, diagrams laid out on graph papers, just sketched out. And she said, pick which one you would like to make. And I looked at them and went, mm, I like that one. And she said, oh, you picked the American one. And I was a little bit taken back as a Canadian that she said that. But when I look at this design, Although I don't know if this is a quilt block, it does have all the look and feel of a Western quilt block. So it has cornerstones and symmetry and balance and everything lines up nicely. And so it does have that feeling of a Western quilt. And as somebody who learned quilting with traditional uh, methods, and I'm still kind of drawn to traditional quilting, this was a design that appealed to me. And so I cut out my pieces and I started making it. And um, when I started making it, then I realized pretty quickly that because this piece is reversible, then that means when you have corners that are gonna line up, there's corners on the front and there's corners on the back. And I have, just enough quilting OCD that I wanted all my points to line up perfectly. And usually if you have a piece like this, especially if you're hand stitching, you can get your points to line up perfectly because you can fudge a little bit. But because there's points on the front and on the back, it was trickier than I had expected or anticipated uh, because I was not used to thinking in multiple dimensions. So the middle was fine, I got that done. But then as I moved on and I would make this bar and be adding it to this piece, I would have it, it look like it lined up and then turn it over, oh, it doesn't line up on that side. Or it would line up here, but not on this side. Or it would line up here and then just one corner would be off. And so it quickly became pretty frustrating to me because I was trying to get everything to line up perfectly. And then as I was working on it and I was getting more frustrated, I began to observe things that are made with this technique. And some a lot of the samples that I saw, I was looking at them more carefully and I realized that things that are made with this technique don't usually look like this. Um, they look much more random, improv, points aren't lined up. So if you see a traditional Korean pojagi or sewing, you might see things that are just squares or half square triangles and everything lines up perfectly. That probably has a lining or a backing, is probably not reversible. If something is reversible, it probably it doesn't have that um, precision alignment to it. And that's because of this, because 
to get your pieces to align on the front and on the back can be really challenging. So I stuck with it and I was successful. You can see that I made it. It is reversible and the points do match on both sides. However, that's why I named this piece Never Again uh, because I realized I was taking my Western quilting rules that I had and I was trying to apply it to a technique that definitely was not designed to support that. And so um, I learned that lesson and I decided that from then on, when I made things with this technique, um, I was going to uh, not fight against the technique, but work with the technique um, to make beautiful things. And so that has a lesson that has really stuck with me. So if you see the window hangings that I make, which are machine stitched, you'll notice I don't uh, worry a lot about getting points to line up, getting corners to line up. And in fact, sometimes it's easier if they don't line up because where the pieces line up, there's a lot of bulk right in that corner because there's a lot of layers of fabric. And so if I was doing a small hand stitching piece, I might get all my corners to line up, but it's even more difficult on a sewing machine to get everything uh, to line up. So this piece, I'm really proud of it. It's a piece that actually was much more difficult to do than it looks like. It looks like a pretty basic beginner piece and it was actually really challenging. So if you think that I'm over exaggerating and that it really could not have been that hard, then I would just challenge you um, there's a tutorial for the technique. You can clearly see the design um, and just try and make something yourself and try and get all the points to line up on the front and the back. And if that is a challenge that you'd love, then go ahead and do it. But for me, I prefer, um, I prefer to have challenges in other areas and not in this. So if you have any questions about this project or this technique, then feel free to ask them. I'd be happy to answer. So I hope you've enjoyed the story of this piece. For more quilting, pajangi, and embroidery inspiration, be sure to check out ebitastudio.com.